Distinguished guests, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon and welcome to unfortunately the last session of the ITU Digital Skills Forum 2024. It's been an amazing three days full of knowledge and discussions and now it's time for the summary and conclusions. I am honored to call on stage the chair of this forum, the general director of the Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, Mr. Philip Marnick. Thank you, everybody. And it's nice to see so many people still here. And hopefully you had an enjoyable lunch. I think for me, it is just to thank you all for coming and actually say how successful the event has been through people's engagement and discussion and everything else. For those of you who didn't know, before this event, the ITU also held their Digital Skills Forum on the 16th of September. And the Training Academy was effectively looking at its annual meeting and seeing how we develop capacity for various people and how we develop development of capacity in those areas. So we see how we get on. Now I'd like to go through the conclusions of what we did. For all of those of you who may have popped out, this has been looking at a number of different areas. Bridging the digital divide, something that we always need to do to make sure that all of us are engaged. National digital skills frameworks for policy making. How is it we can develop policy within a framework for actually the future? Digital skills for jobs. Industry's perspectives on the skills needed. So not just what the policymakers think you should do, what does industry actually tell us needs to be done? Digital innovators and entrepreneurs, the people who will set the future. Skills for the green and digital transformation. Skills for safe and secure use of digital technologies and online information. Future skill requirements of the age of emerging technologies. Technologies continue to advance. The skills we need to do with the tools of today are different than the tools we need for tomorrow. So what are the outcomes and the recommendations? We all know that digital skills are no longer nice to have. They're not the sort of things that people just need or want. In our today's digital world, they are foundations for substantial and prosperous future. Soft skills are equally important. What are soft skills? Creative thinking, problem solving, communication, but communication which is more human-centered, actually engaging with real people, not just the machines, and not talking over people, but engaging with them. These have to go with our upskilling of, of, of technical skills. The forum noted that digital skills are the backbone of a successful digital transformation. They're both a driver for positive change and an enabler to achieve the sustainable development goals of the UN. That's the SDGs. By 2030, 90% of all jobs will require some level of digital skill. Today, 65% of children entering primary education will work in jobs that don't exist today. So parents of young children, just think of what they're going, because how many people will actually be doing something you today don't even know exists? This for us under, underscores the importance of digital skills of a foundation for all workers. If you're an organization that doesn't invest in digital skills, you'll be left behind. We all noted that a focus on digital schools ensures that existing and future workforces are preferred for not just today's stuff, but for tomorrow. They can participate in tomorrow's job work. We need to minimize inequalities. Digital skills is great, it should help us level up. For women, particularly, but also for persons with disabilities and people in unserved and underserved communities. We need to make sure that actually as we foster development and foster the future, we don't leave anyone behind, both in developed and developing economies. 
We acknowledge that partnerships and multi-stakeholder collaboration is paramount in addressing the digital skills gap, tackling unequal access to technology, education, training and infrastructure. As all things we do, let's make sure that we remember we shouldn't leave anyone behind. We need to do something to foster, collaborate, to get people. Discussions on bridging the digital divide highlighted the lack of digital skills as a main barrier to connect and unconnected. Emphasizing the need for tailored and substantial digital skills project and programs that meets the needs of underserved groups. We can all learn from each other, best practice, new lessons learned and challenges. Basically, let's build a digital capability and things such as the ITU Cisco Ledge Digital Transformation Centers are an invaluable assistance to helping these things move. The digital skills gap needs to be addressed by policymakers. We need to make sure that we're all including digital skills policies and programs as key elements of the national digital transformation strategies. Almost every country has a digital transformation strategy, but do we make sure that we have the people with the skills to enable us to do it and actually deliver on it and it builds for everybody. The ITU Digital Skills Toolset is a valuable document as most people commented. It provides policymakers and regulators with concrete step-by-step -step guidance on how to develop and implement national digital strategies and roadmaps. But it's not just doing this if you're not going to measure it. So if you need to carry out a digital skills assessment, which is the first critical start, step, and you also need to measure demand and supply, what do you actually have? The ITU indicators are useful inputs for this, this um, exercise. And if we're looking at the ITU indicators, we'll actually be able to see genuinely how we perform and therefore what we can do about it. The European Commission Digital Comp Framework was also helpful in the announcement, and it helps in progress of setting up SEAL strategies to assess the national skills gaps. The framework can be adapted to use in developing countries as well. The ongoing digital transformation is profoundly affecting labour markets, necessitating widespread upskilling and reskilling. If, if technologies of tomorrow are different and the jobs of tomorrow are different, it means we need to make sure the people we have today will have the skills that enable them to engage tomorrow. This is upskilling. We need to make sure we're using the frameworks to get this. You all emphasise that addressing digital skills demand requires more than just focusing on digital transformation and technology. It also needs interpersonal and soft skills, as well as culture taking into account cultural factors. We all live in a world where cultures are slightly different. We need to make sure we understand that and how people live in their societies so we can make sure that everybody can thrive in the digital economy. It's stressed that being unemployable is much worse than being unemployed. And that means for tomorrow, we need to make sure that we give people the skills so they can participate in the digital society, not leaving people behind because they won't be able to move forward. And that's important as a tool. Policy and education reforms should integrate digital skills training at all levels across sectors to address the pressing digital skills gaps. Governments should develop structural curricula on digital skills and competencies that are applied universally across the education system. This is not just those in universities, but those as they start in their education. This implies supporting and upskilling teachers, because unless we start with our teachers, we won't be able to help people in education learn the things they need to learn in the future. We launched a call for action for increasing digital dialogue between government, academia, and the private sector to address common challenges and find common solutions with a forward-looking perspective. Forward-looking is important. Looking back to see what we did in the past may not be so indicative of what the new technologies bring for us as we move forward. We also need to look at cross-sectional partnerships they drive innovation and scalable digital skills training. Notably, using the young to upskill the older generations. I started by saying that 65% of the people who are entering primary education will work in jobs that don't exist today. 
you're working in the jobs that won't exist tomorrow. That means you need to upskill. That means you need the young to help you to upskill to make sure you can participate tomorrow. Investment in young innovators needs to be sustainable, responsible, and aligned with ethical considerations and their respective fields. For a well-rounded innovative future, it's essential to make digital education and entrepreneurial opportunities inclusive and accessible. We all noted the importance of promoting skills for online safety and secure use of digital technologies. It can be a frightening world. Let's make sure it's safe. To ensure that public, including children and youth, can critically analyse information, identify online disinformation, fake news and hate speech, and the advantage of intercultural understanding and universal access to information are equally important to engage safety and security in the digital space. It is our challenge to the future to make sure that people can actually safely use the technologies and they feel safe doing so. The skills that citizens need to be safe and secure online need to continue to evolve to match the digital threats. To equip citizens with those skills, combined effort from public and private sector, as well as academic institutions is key. The underlying scope, as was said through many of the conversations, is we need to collaborate across everywhere. The most demanded skills on online safety include both soft and technical skills. Recognising 70% of cyber attacks stem from human factors, i.e. you make a mistake. Key skills include media and information literacy, critical thinking, communication, cyber security awareness, incident management, and AI application security. The mutually reinforcing evolution of the green and digital transformations was underscored. Digital technologies offer innovative solutions for managing environmental resources, while green principles guide sustainable technology development. We all recognise that the combined impact of green and digital trans transitions will reshape the jobs market. While certain jobs may be displaced due to automation and digitisation, new opportunities will emerge in the green sectors. The ILO projects that potentially 24 million new jobs by 2030 through the transition of green economies. This shift requires upskilling and reskilling the workforce to meet these new demands. Delegates emphasised that educational systems and policy frameworks must evolve to support the green and digital transformation. Higher education institutions play a crucial role in developing future-ready professionals, along with adaptation of training and vocational education, targeting training courses and regulation of job qualifications to ensure successful green and digital transformation. Digital skills are key drivers of sustainability in the green economy. For example, they enable more efficient resource management and monitoring environmental data. Developing the workforce's digital capabilities, especially in areas like environmental technology, will be crucial to achieving climate goals and fostering a sustainable economy. AI technologies are posed to transform sectors with high automation. Potentials such as manufacturing and agriculture. AI will transform at-risk sectors while boosting productivity in others, making upskilling and retraining the workforce essential. AI-powered solutions are expected to be used by 93% of organisations by 2028. To prepare the workforce and society, there will be an increasing demand for advanced skill digital coupled with the soft skills that facilitate human AI collaboration. So AI is seen as a friend. I think in the AI Good Summit, uh, for Good Summit, it was said that AI will actually superpower the humans as opposed to replace the humans. It will give us all superpowers. So hopefully you can all fly home successfully. <laughs> Governments are called upon to implement robust policies to address the challenges and opportunities presented by AI. These policies should include promoting skills development at all levels of education, particularly in AI and digital technologies. Policymakers were encouraged to monitor and forecast labour market changes, develop skills strategies 
targeting all levels of the workforce and support vulnerable populations. Women in particular need to be targeted support since they're often less positioned to seize AI opportunities. Over 50% 50, 50 of the world's labor force is women. Leaving women behind means we're underutilizing 50% of our potential. So therefore we must make sure that what we're doing is covering it. Highlighting the need for dedicated training and awareness, governments were also urged to implement ethical frameworks to build trust in AI technologies. Collaboration between governments, industry, and educational institutions was stressed as key to addressing the area of skills gap. While the private sector is well placed to know best the future skills needs, education institutions need to adapt their learning programs to address those needs. Cross-border collaboration was also noted as crucial for leveling the global playing field. So that is the overall summary of what people said. From me, I would like to thank you all for actually participating in the debate. Debate and exchange of ideas is the thing that will help us to develop the future of tomorrow. I'd also like to thank the ITU team for all the effort they've put into making this such a successful event, and to my own team who's worked with the ITU team to try and host it for you all. I think this has facilitated your ability to engage in debate by selecting the right people to take part in the frameworks and the panels to do so. Thank you very much indeed, and I hope you've all enjoyed the event. As one person said, make it fun. Thank you. Sorry, I can't escape. I've got to sit here. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Philip Marnik, for your very well put together summary. Ladies and gentlemen, now I'm honored to call on stage uh, BDT Director Dr. Kosmas Zavazava on stage. So, thank you, Philip. You managed to scare us when you said, you must reskill and upskill. But we will do our best. I want to thank, uh, first and foremost, the TRA team. You are amazing. And our team. <clears throat> and our ITU team, those you see here, and those you don't see. You two are amazing. And when you, t when you put these two teams together, there is bound to be a spark. And I think it was evident. I want to thank the interpreters. Without you, it would have been well nigh impossible for us to understand each other. Our strength lies in our diversity. We don't speak the same language, but when it comes to technology, we do speak the same language. So they made it so easy. They are not here. We experimented with the remote interpretation. I think it worked. So we want to thank them. The technicians, the sound was great. Many of the delegates are smiling because they ate the great cuisine of Bahrain. And we wanted to thank all those who provided for us the great hospitality coming from the kingdom and from the peoples of Bahrain is something that we cherish and will always remember. I wanted to thank the ushers, the security, and all those who contributed to the successful conclusion of this great event. We, in the development sector, are meant to carry a mission, and that mission is to make sure that every living person has access, has the skills, and is able to use digital tools for a better life. The chair has said, artificial intelligence should not take over from humans or replace humans. We must work side by side with the digital tools of today to shape a better tomorrow. I don't want to go into the details, 
of what was discussed because after the chair has spoken, I have no voice. I think he did a great summary, and I want to thank him for that great. I would like to thank the panelists, the many experts who came, took time to come here and share their knowledge with the rest of us, and I think that makes it a great event and a representative of the needs of the international community. The fact that there was representation from multi-stakeholders, civil society, academia, industry and private sector, the member states and the United Nations sister organizations, I think that demonstrates that collaboration, partnership and coordination in our efforts in order for us to optimize the meager resources at our disposal. As Saint John. We have to work together not for credit taking, but complementarity and synergy should be the word of the day. I was humbled by all the contributions, intellectual power that was injected in the discussions, and I learned a lot myself, just to take a cue from the chair that we have to rescue and skill up. So I think I learned a lot. He also mentioned the issue of innovation, the power to do new things through better ways, and creativity and improvement on that which we already have. And I take this opportunity to invite you to our Global Innovation Forum, which is going to take place in Malta, Vieta. It is going to be from the 20th to the 30th of November. Don't be left out, and we need you to help those who need your help uh, to share ideas. We believe in South-South, North-South cooperation. We also recognize, of course, the special groups that we have so that I don't go away without giving some statistics because our chair was loaded with the statistics. 70% of the population in rural areas in the least developed countries are women and children, and they are very entrepreneurial and enterprising. We cannot leave them unconnected, unskilled, and we cannot leave them vulnerable because of potential cyber attacks, hallucinations, deep facts, everything. It is our duty to protect and to encourage them to be online and to be safe online. So I would like to say to you, it has been really eye-opening and I think for the interpreters, they may not be amused by me because I gave them the text of my speech and it must be a little bit uh, challenging to follow this. So I will go to my speech quickly. It's a very short one. Mr. Philip Manik, General Director, Telecommunications Regulator Authority and Chair of this Digital Skills Forum, Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. As I stand here before you, I'm humbled to see the passion, commitment, and the dedication out of all of you. Someone said, if you think you are too small and you have not contributed much, it means you have never been in bed with a mosquito. Uh, the expertise, experience, and the knowledge under this one roof, and of course, those online, is the impact to shape the future of billions of people across the globe. This event would not have happened in a vacuum. Therefore, I want to thank my dear friend Philip and the chair of this event, indeed, His Excellency the Minister, the government and the peoples of this great kingdom for hosting us all. Let us please show our appreciation. So this week, we welcomed, if you look around the room, I think you will doubt the figures, but these are true figures. We welcomed over 680 participants, with many online participating virtually, the beauty of technology. We also had many ministers to take care of the policy aspects. We have many deputy ministers, Director Generals of Regulatory Authorities, 
representatives of the private sector and the industry and the UN agencies. What a great pleasure for us to have great minds in one roof and sharing ideas. This is a true multi-stakeholder approach that will make us win as we build the bridge to close the connectivity, the skills, and the innovation divides. Our chair has fantastically captured the key points that emerged out of this skills forum. Congratulations to him. One thing though, the rapid evolution of technologies, in particular artificial intelligence, requires continuous upskilling and reskilling, driven by our belief that lifelong learning is key to advancing the universal, meaningful, and sustainable development agenda. We have two strategic goals in our strategic plan adopted in 2022 at the Plain Potential Conference. One is to make sure there is a universal, accessible, affordable connectivity. And the second one is to achieve sustainable digital development and the digital transformation. And in that we believe and we are committed. We in the development sector, we are privileged because we interface with the people and we can see the transformative power of technology to make people's lives better, to protect the environment, the planet, and to bring prosperity and alleviate the scourge of poverty and hunger. Ladies and gentlemen, I listened and absorbed the repeated call for collaboration, coordination, and partnerships in developing and delivering skills. We will achieve more working together, avoiding duplication of both resources and effort. One of the take-home quotes coming out of this event is, worse than being unemployed is being unemployable and we must take heed. And we do recognize the unique challenges of different segments of our regions, our countries, and our communities. The least developed countries are struggling to play catch up, but we see a lot of progress. The landlocked developing countries do not have access to submarine cables and have limited to the access to the sea. They depend on their neighbors who are coastal countries. They have to maintain good neighborliness and good relations, otherwise they will be stuck. But also the needs of the small island developing states because of their small size, small markets, vulnerability to economic shocks, and the natural disasters. So together as a community, we have to take advantage of our diversity, for they too have their stories to tell and their contribution to make. Ladies and gentlemen, I listened and absorbed, and I tell you that everything that the chairman has said holds value. We specialize in providing capacity building, both institutional and human. And you don't hesitate if we can be at your service. At this point, I want to recognize the great work that our digital transformation centers are doing to reach the marginalized, to the constellation of our academy training centers across the globe. We do not take you and your contributions for granted. I enjoyed your insightful meeting that preceded this forum. Our strengths, as I have said already, our strength lies in our diversity, and I'm pleased that every region hosts at least one ITU Academy Training Center. And I was listening as I was seated there. What we need is to make sure that there is coherence between the work delivered by our ITU Academy by the Digital Transformation Centers and our ATCs. I want to express my heartfelt thanks to all the experts one more time who enriched our discussions, our panelists and moderators. We would have a hard time, again I repeat, understanding each other if we didn't have our great interpreters. Our technical teams, one more time, ushers, security, a big thank you to you. The TRA team, once again, you are amazing. 
we learned a lot of teamwork from you. Our team in ITU, of course, they are international civil service, and they are ready to serve. And I should say I'm proud to lead this great team who are working tirelessly to make a difference in this world. And they do so with a smile, which is a good thing. Finally, I want to invite you to our upcoming flagship event, which I already did, the Global Innovation Forum. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be in Malta from 20th to 30th of October. Join us and help us to make a difference. I would like just as a small memento to play a highlight video to capture the few days that we spent together. Can we have the video? So this small memento is going to be available for your downloading if you wish to share it with friends and family. And uh, before I leave the podium, I want to wish each and every one of you happy, safe travels. And we look forward to meeting again soon. And I feel duty bound to recognize our chair. Uh, to whom we are going to award a symbolical certificate so that he doesn't have a problem with uh, the, ex the ethics team because it's of no financial value. But it means a lot for us just to express our appreciation. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Dr. Zapazava. And now, Mr. Philip Marnik, I'd like to invite you to say a few closing remarks, if you wish. I've already said a lot. Um, we'd like, on behalf of the Kingdom of Bahrain, to thank you all for coming. I hope you've enjoyed your time here. As I said before, one of the panelists on, from one of the academic universities said, no matter what you think about, it needs to be fun. And for me, everything we do when we engage needs to be fun, because that way people want to do things and do it. 
I'd like to thank Cosmos particularly for allowing us to host this event and actually for leading the development sector over the last few years to take on new challenges to try and help connect the unconnected and to make sure that everyone can participate in the digital society. He's supported by his team who have been working with us to try and put this event together. None of these things happen without the efforts of individuals. My own team has worked tirelessly to try and get everything together, to make sure all the arrangements are in place, to make sure that when you got on your planes and got off them and stayed in the hotels and everything else, you could come and participate in this debate and you didn't have to worry. So I'd like to thank them particularly for all the effort they've put into making this happen. We hope the event has been successful. We hope that not only do people talk, but actually take actions. One of the things that we said in the summary from the thing is here's what people have said. Those are great, but now you have to do something about it. As I merrily joked, guy going into school today will be doing a new job in a few years' time. That means that all of us here, if we want to continue to participate in this digital society, need to continue to have lifelong learning. If we don't, we're the guys left behind and looking at everybody else. So take on board what was said, look at the actions. Thank you very much for coming, and I hope you enjoy the event, and all have nice, safe trips home. Goodbye. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Marnik, for your heartfelt words. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our three-day forum. It was an honour and a pleasure to be part of such wonderful events. We would like to thank you very much for your attendance and for staying and for your participation here with us. I would like to remind all participants that you will find all the information you need from photos, presentations, and most importantly, logistically, the shuttle bus schedule is available in the forum's website. So and I hope you enjoyed the conference and I hope you enjoyed the Kingdom of Bahrain. Have safe travels and have a wonderful day ahead of you. Thank you.